we are continuing our journey towards the Northwest Passage. Welcome aboard as we attempt to sail the Northwest Passage from Alaska to Greenland, often referred to as the Mount Everest of sailing and many other cliches, it might just be the most difficult continuous sailing route on the planet. The passage is incredibly remote and riddled with sea ice and icebergs. Despite the rapid decline of Arctic sea ice, in some years only icebreakers can navigate this route. Our journey from Alaska to Greenland spans a total of 5000 miles and in this video we'll be navigating along the Aleutian Peninsula towards Falls Pass, the gateway to the Bering Sea. We are now here in Geographic Harbor. We've seen a lot of uh, brown bears and we've waited out a storm. This part of the coast is very remote and also very unforgiving. Once we get out of the Shelikov Strait, there are not going to be that many anchorages and not that much cover. So we really have to choose our um, next spot carefully. Hey, Pakarhut, me lähetään nyt. Ui, nyt me mennään paljon vauhtia. Kuusi puoli ihan ok. Six knots and flat seas can't really hope for better. <laughs> Näytätkö se kun ei oo valtaja? Näytän. Ei tuu paha olo. All right, the evening is falling and we are still doing around six knots or five and a half knots, which is amazing considering that it is very calm out. Um, I think we have around a knot of current with us. And let me show you. We have the current that comes out of the Shelikov Strait. So there's always some current going through the strait like this. It always goes the same direction as far as I understand. 
and we are very close to this ledge here you know where it suddenly gets very shallow so i think the current kind of also compresses here so i'm actually trying to follow the ledge here and make full use of the current uh, the depth reading here is not correct because um, the signal is bouncing off from one of the intermediate water layers since um, it cannot reach the bottom the signal bounces there's a weak signal that bounces from you know where the water temperature changes or something and then that's what the de depth transducer is showing but it's actually around yeah at least 200 meters deep here I think there's something stuck on the propeller. Because when I put the gear on, it starts making. Volatile. Or maybe stuck on this because it's so loud here. I think it's just uh, seaweed. I didn't want to try and reverse if it's um, rope because it might make it worse. But I think this one we can. This here is our rear digger board box and you can see the sea through there, but I cannot see the, I cannot see any gelf anymore. Maybe I should put like a camera down there. Well, I put the camera down and I can see here from the footage that we have some bull kelp. But luckily enough, it's just a piece of kelp and nothing else. We're not gonna dive because of that or anything like that. We are really shitty uh, divers anyway, and the water is very cold. We'll just wait for this one to, I don't know, decompose or something. I think it'll come off eventually, but I'm surprised that it didn't come off already because I reversed really hard a couple of times and it's still there. Might be keeping us company for a while. We were just anchoring or starting to get ready to anchor here and I saw this bunch of um, seagulls here. I thought they are standing on like a white rock but turns out it's a whale carcass. Nice spot and a nice evening.
Yeah. Today we are going on the beach. We have a mission or two of them first. Can I do some beach combing? I want to find one of these Japanese glass balls, the fishing floats, and then ta -da! practice shooting our polar bear protection weapon. We have no idea what we are doing. Boom, boom. <laughs> yes. Hey, I wanted a sand beach, not frigging rocks here. <laughs> A lot of this trash is like from fishing a lot of fishing uh, floats and nets and Hieno keppi Ootko sä Gandalf? Oon vähän vaan liian iso Ei Gandalf, ei se mikään Oi se on Harry Potter. On hieno keppi. Pretty cool how the waves have carved out the rock here. It's just completely smooth. That's the first bone. Ah, this is a really small shoulder bone where the flipper connects to the body but this is really small, look! Yeah, it's a baby. Look how many blue muscles! Oh my god, that's a lot! These are really small, super small, we're not gonna eat those! No Japanese fishing floats yet, but we found one sack of plastic trash of course, this is only a fraction of what's here on the beach. Um, we can only pick so much, but at least it's something. If I remember correctly, around 30% of the plastic that ends up in the sea floats. So that stuff kind of ends up on the beaches at some point. But 70% uh, doesn't float and just ends up at the bottom of the ocean. So, when you think of plastic trash being like a third world problem, that's not really true. All of this trash here is of US origin, I would say. And there's just so much more here on the beach. If you wanted to actually clean this up, you'd have to come here with a, with a barge. All right, so now we have our American built Mossberg 590 <laughs> If this is our <laughs> souvenir from America um, We actually got this as a donation Thank you um, You know who you are And uh, normally we would load this with uh, really big slugs for polar bear protection Of course that's just like a very very last line of defense uh, just as a disclaimer, we don't know how to shoot. We are not good shooters. We already know that. But we are trying to practice a little bit because if you do carry a gun, then it's probably useful to have at least some kind of an idea of what you are doing. And uh, yeah, you shoot some really, really heavy slugs normally, but I'm just going to shoot some target loads now. We have our targets there, the pieces of plastic, and these ones are soft plastic, so they shouldn't break. You can tell me in the comments that I suck, but 
I already know that, so... Yeah, these are just some really small, small target loads. Okay, I'm with the cox. Yeah. Oh, it's also a good one. Yeah. It's also a good one. Yeah. But it's also a good one. Yeah. But it's also Sä asut siihen, sul menee ihan pikkusen vasemmalle. Okei, okay, I'm gonna shoot some buckshot rounds. These are a lot bigger, they should have more recoil. And we've moved up the hill, so... That everything is soft, so we don't have like rocks anywhere, just... In case there's like a ricochet, I don't know. Let's go. 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 And there's whales over there. I can see them blowing air over there. Oh, you won't be able to see it on the camera. Maybe we see them when we leave. Oh, you? Yeah. There's at least two. Täällä ne on ne valaat. The whales are still here. It's uh, two humpback whales, I think. So the humpback whales, when they dive like this and when they show their tail, that's when they are going for like a longer dive usually. So they are feeding on some herring here, so I know when they dive and they show their tail, then it's seems to be around like 5 to 10 minutes that they stay under the water right now.
<coughs> just getting the dinghy a bit up the river so the high tide won't take it away. So green and so soft. Okay, literally walked 50 meters and there's a bear there. Looks like a bear, right? Yeah, it's a bear. Too big to be anything else. Just chilling in the grass. Pretty cool, just doing some bear watching, drinking coffee. The bear is like maybe a couple hundred meters away over there. So we has reached a level of comfort with the bears because she's just reading a book there. Onks mun vastuulla? Okay, apparently I'm on a bear watch, so... Before the salmon season begins, the bears can be quite hungry, but besides of clams and salmon, they are also happy to munch on some grass and roots. For the bears, it's a race to get as fat as possible before the upcoming long winter. What's sad here as well, you see the bear tracks and then literally next to them just so much trash here on the beach. We're gonna collect some, but yeah, it feels a little bit hopeless again with all of this crap here. All right, today we have a nice breeze. I think we're gonna maybe sail off from the anchor. We don't even need an engine here. We are obviously experimenting with these lazy jacks. This is like a really quick setup that I put together in like 20 minutes. So that's why the lengths or the lines are not decided. But we take them away. Or I want to have this kind of a setup where you take them away when you hoist the sail because um, otherwise the sail really gets stuck on the lines quite easily. And then you just Put them back up. Go down there. And now we do the same on the other side, and then the sail is ready for reefing or dropping or whatever. I might adjust the lengths a little bit more, but when we are done with the process, we're always going to snip off the excess here. We need to go to a town to take out the trash that we collected on the beach. What are your plans in the town? Maybe fill up our water one last time. Go to the library. The swimming pool maybe. If it's open, it's at the high school, I think.
<clears throat> nice wind. Very nice. Doing like eight knots, seven and a half. So now we are really blasting along, we are doing like uh, seven over seven knots all the time, touching nine knots when surfing down the waves, so it's kind of uh, looking like we might need to even put a reef in soon, but we're gonna be going to the um, small community of Sand Point here on the Popoff Island should be a really interesting place and there should be a good relatively new harbor there here we are reefing while sailing downwind which kind of looks ugly on the sail but should be possible with our setup as you might notice we are still working on perfecting our sail handling system we tried to test and practice everything as well as possible because we knew that after this leg we'd be entering the Bering Sea and things would start to get a lot more tough. Something wrong with the reefing lines. And it seemed to work pretty okay. We have a problem with uh, one of the reefing lines. Is, is There's a lot of friction somewhere inside the boom or something. I really have to check on that. Um, Although the block at the base of the mast is kind of not really that great, it's kind of not at the correct angle, so maybe swap that out. <coughs> but uh, right now it looks pretty good. Uh, interesting docking, the harbor is completely full, I think, as well. The salmon season is starting. Luckily for us there was an ongoing opening for commercial salmon fishing, so most of the boats were out of the harbour and there was actually plenty of space. The openings usually last two or three days and most boats go out fishing no matter the weather, because if you are not fishing you are also not making any money. <laughs> we spent several days waiting for the gale to pass, watching the steady flow of fishing boats. The purse seine boats you see here are a common sight in this region, where commercial fishing is the town's lifeblood. Though Sandpoint has seen its population decline by nearly a third over the past two decades, it remains one of the larger communities in the area with around 600 residents. Throughout the entire Northwest Passage, we travel as guests on indigenous homelands. In Sandpoint too, nearly half of the population is of Alayut Unangan descent, reflecting the deep indigenous roots of the region. We received a very warm welcome from the locals and want to thank the Peterson family. Here they are, heading out on their boat for a salmon opening. Thank you.
After Sandpoint, we headed straight for False Pass, the quickest route from the Pacific Ocean into the Bering Sea. The pass, being shallow and connecting two vast bodies of water, has powerful currents and it is only accessible to vessels with a relatively shallow draft. The town of False Pass lies roughly midway through, just before you reach the northern section of the pass, which is the most challenging part. We made it into the harbor just before another low pressure system rolled in. But more about that and if we made it through the pass in the next video where we get hammered by gale force winds and make our attempt to cross the Bering Sea northward. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to subscribe and if you want to support the creation of these videos financially please check out my Patreon page. Patrons also get access to a private chat group and live streams and special updates. I will see you all next time. Bye bye.